Morning, Lisa. How lovely to see you. As you. Thank you for having me today. You're very welcome. Chat. It's nice to see you having a drink of coffee with me rather than being in the cricketers having a few pints. How many times have we done that over the oh, years? Oh, many, yeah. And other places. Yeah, many, way too many beers on way too many occasions. So thanks for dropping in for coffee as okay. our beverage of choice this morning. Really nice to see you. So we just invited you in to learn a little bit more about Nexus. Yeah and to see how that can help property owners, okay. be they residential buyers, be they commercial yeah. businesses. What is it that Tony Copeland at Nexus offers? Now, I've known you a long time, yeah. so I know all too well what you do. Yeah. And in days gone by, I used to think AV, lighting, cinemas, yeah. but it's evolved into a lot more. And I know home entertainment, yeah is a big phrase now meaning many things to many people yeah. not just lighting automated lighting and cinemas but way more than that absolutely so yeah. tell me a little bit more what does home entertainment mean to the consumer well home entertainment uh it means a lot of things you know some people might think it's just a speaker you know yeah. surround sound etc but just winding back a little bit i think for what i do at nexus is all about home technology so it is about audio visual but equally it's about controlling your home you know yeah. you go into curries or wherever you might shop now for gadgets and most things will come with some form of app but what we're trying to do is simplify that because surprisingly or not you know i used to think that a lot of my clients would be real techies and you know know exactly what they want but they don't mm -hmm. typically you know i'd say probably 70 80 percent of the clients aren't like that at all mm -hmm. what they want to understand or think they need is the benefits they're going to get from technology yeah. because they know it's going to be an investment so Really, I'll go through everything with them. So if they've moved into a house or they've been in a house for a long time but they're looking to maybe modernise it, extend, etc. That's the time when you're going to be having sort of walls down and ceilings down. It's to really look at, right, what are the potentials? Now, technology is not for everyone. I'm yeah. not the biggest tech, if I'm being brutally honest. But well, don't look at me either. <laughs> everyone knows my capabilities. The less said, the better. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but, it, but it offers benefits. You know, yeah. it's, it's kind of a phrase I always use. It's... It's using home technology or technology at home to in, enhance your everyday living yeah. and lifestyle. And, and that's what people are starting to embrace more now. So whilst they're not techies, they don't really need to be because if they've got the right company in to do it, yeah. it's all going to be set up. They're on call, should there be any hiccups because it's technology at the end of the day. So, you know, it does occasionally go wrong. So it's just having that peace of mind that it's going to continue to work. Yeah. Um, more than anything so i've gone around the houses a little bit there but really coming back to your point with it used to be about sort of audio visual stuff but it's a lot more now yeah. even down to golf simulators i was going to say i noticed on your marketing materials golf simulators yeah. wow yeah. amazing i wish i had a house that i could have well my son would never leave home and go to work if he had a <laughs> golf simulator so it's, it's probably a, a good thing we haven't got one but yeah. i mean how things have moved on and this is all the sorts of things that you can bring to bringing out what do people want in their life, yeah. what kind of technology do they want, what level of complexity do they want, Absolutely. and what are they actually even capable of using themselves? Because yeah. yeah. some people can you know, take a whole bite of the cherry and go, oh my God, I don't even know how to use this now. It's all about thinking about what they're trying to achieve yeah. and also what they're capable of using, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, but well, you know, I'll hold their hand and the experts who get involved you know, working with me to do that. Yeah. Um, so it's really just understanding the first thing I always say, forget technology, forget, yeah. you know, because often you'll sit with someone and I say, the first question is, you've said, you've expressed interest in getting this system, you know, it might be a home automation system, but why? And typically it's because they've gone to a hotel, a nice swanky hotel and they've had it, or to a friend's house. But actually it might not be the best fit for what they need and what they want, and arguably sometimes what they can afford or want to afford. So it's just stripping all that back, saying like, tell me what you want from technology, where do you think it will benefit you in life, you know, lifestyle, home, etc. And obviously I'll throw in questions and pointers and often where we get to is, it's not what they thought in the first place. Yes. What they end up getting isn't what they thought they wanted yeah. and were gonna get. So it's really just um, opening their eyes to what's out there. Um, and the beauty of what I do now is because I'm totally independent, totally yes. impartial, I'm not stuck to a brand. I'm not a dealer where I have to go and use certain brands. Um, yeah. And I know lots of dealers out there still have opportunities to go wider than that, but a lot of them, from my experience, they stick to what they know and what they do. Yeah. It's what they know, and it's also where they're going to be earning their margins yeah. from. So they're going to recommend the Bang & Olufsen or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice I keep saying that because I don't know the names of many others because I'm not very <laughs> technical, so Bang & 
of them will come up fairly quickly, yeah. frequently. But anyway, they'll they'll recommend a brand because that's their who they're aligned to, who Absolutely. they've got the relationship. Perhaps they're getting referrals or finders fees or whatever. But for you, as an impartial, independent consultant, yeah. what they're getting from you is, I'll tell you the best fit for you, yeah. not what the best product is that I want to sell you. Absolutely. And, and that's that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Hundred percent. It doesn't affect me, you know. No. I, I, I'm because I've got that independence now. I don't actually do the work. No. What I'll do is sit with a client, educate them, show them all what's out there, what's available, and even which occasionally happens, they'll say, "Can you do this? Have you done this?" And it will be technology I've probably never even heard of. But the good thing is, I'll do the groundwork. Yes. So I say to them, "Just use me as a sounding block. You know, I'll yeah. go off, find out what I can find out, and I'll come back to you. So rest assured, you know, you won't have to run around doing this, that." And the other, and then along the way, if that proves to be the right technology, I'll often meet someone who's an expert in that field. Yes. So I'll associate them and introduce them to the client. Having said that, you know I'm always involved in that journey from start to finish, from the original conversations, ideas, concepts, etc., through to design and installation. I'm always there in the background. So whilst I don't do the installation, these guys that I'm recommending because I've used them, they're tried and tested, and they're not going to let me down. No. You know, and that's most important. It's my reputation at the end of the day. Exactly. So if I advise the wrong person or something goes wrong, I've got to be there to pick the pieces yep. up. So something which, again, and this is just from my previous life in insurance um, many moons ago, that I was always, we always did, because a lot of our business came by recommendation, is, is have that seven-day-a-week mentality. So if there's a problem, if there's a thought, you know, a lot of clients are time poor during the week, yeah, yeah. so often they'll be having a cup of coffee, walking around the house on Saturday or Sunday, mid-project, looking up at them thinking, oh, I didn't think that was going to be there, or it's not the colour I thought. Whatever it might be, you know, I tell them from day one, phone me. Yeah, and, and, and what I love about you is your, not just your impartiality and your independence about yeah. the whole thing, <clears throat> is your integrity and your honesty. And I'm thinking back now to last year when I had a very nice high net worth client mm. with a property, who thought they needed lots of electron, Fortron, yeah. surround sound TVs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I invited you to come mm -hmm. in as my preferred yeah. expert to give them impartial advice. I and what you actually advised them was, you don't need me, you don't need to pay me for my service, you need to go and buy this television yeah. with this sound bar from John Lewis. Yeah. And they have never forgotten the fact that what they loved about you was the fact that you didn't just try and sell them technology, no. you told them to go somewhere else because yeah. your service was overkill for them. It they was, didn't yeah. really need all of the gadgets that they thought they did. No. And that's what's, I think that's the basis of your success is that you've been able to show integrity yeah. and honesty yeah. and sometimes tell people not to use you because you can't, you don't, it's overkill basically. It is, yeah. So that's great and that, that's fantastic. That's what people want and is sometimes in short supply in mm -hmm. the industry. So tell us a little about, a bit about one of your projects. I mean, it's one of the exciting ones, maybe, I mean, who uses these golf simulators? I guess they're kind of, celebrities are obviously high net worth clients. Yeah, more and more people, it's something I've fairly newly got involved with. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've again found some experts in the field, already taken people that are still pipeline at the moment to demo facilities where they can just get involved, hit golf, I mean, they're all golfers anyway, but. You know, it's, 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 some people go to these simulators and it's not what they expected because yeah. it's not lifelike. Mm. The ones we go to are, I mean, they're fantastic. Um, well, don't tell Charlie and Simon. <laughs> don't tell them where the location is because they'll be down there all the time. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it's a new thing. But again, it comes back to what I said. It doesn't matter what the technology is. You know, I'm, I'm wide eyes open that even if it's something I don't know, I'll go and find out sure. and do the legwork um, and then come back. And sometimes that doesn't lead to anything. Um, I had a call back actually from a client that I spoke to probably about 12 months ago, called me out of the blue uh, last week and going back, you know, so it's yeah. just, but obviously I did enough in the first place to say, look, no pressure, this is what we can do, this yeah. is, and, and it kind of goes from there. I think if you try and pressurise someone too much, it's, especially if they don't fully understand yeah. about technology, etc., it just turns exactly. off. Yeah. And I guess one of the key questions that people might be thinking is, at what point should they engage with Tony? I mean when they're doing a new build or an extension or whatever, am I right to say that it's never too soon? Because you've got to think about all the wiring and what goes yeah. on behind the scenes, not yeah. just the interface that they're going to be using. So is it never too soon to start talking to you? No, the sooner the better really. I mean, particularly if someone's uh, building a house, modernising a house, or 
extending, you know, where bricks, uh, sort of ceilings and, and um, walls are coming down because of caving yeah. more than anything. That's the time. And also, if, 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 you, if it's an afterthought, people compromise with yes. you know, technology. Yeah. So if it's not an afterthought and you think about it all before, which is hopefully where my service will come into play, it can then, you can go back, they often go back to their architect and say, look, we weren't going to have this to begin with, now we are, can you build into the plans yeah. if it's relevant? So, yeah, definitely the, the sooner the better, really. And that's why working with architects and interior designers, as you know, um, is probably the, the, a good thing because they're in that early stages. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, your experience will allow them to future-proof the prop property. Okay. So it's not just about what do I need here and now. But what am I putting into this property as we evolve in human beings to be more and more techno driven yeah. Yeah. and the more technology the better, particularly for the male community might I say. It, it's you know, you've got to think about when I sell this house, yeah. future proofing it, yeah. am I right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And the other thing is as well, cabling. I mean you we do wired and wireless technology. Right. But on a lot of equipment, my opinion is if you can wire it, wire it. Yes. If, if, if you can't, then obviously there is good Wi-Fi, wireless solutions out there. But if you're, as I said, getting ceilings down the walls and you're running cable, run as much cable as you can within reason. Okay. So we had done one, well, six months ago probably now, where, I can't remember the kid's name, but let's call him Johnny Mary. And they said, look, little Johnny's eight, so he wants music in his room, but Mary's only five at the moment, so I don't really want her listening to things mm -hmm. that I have no control of, even that they could. So I said, okay, fine. But... What about when she's eight or nine, you know, in mm. three years' time? And he said, well, yeah, we'll probably do it then. I said, well, you then closed all your house up, decorated yeah. it, spent a fortune, and now you're telling us that you want to run a cable from A to B, which might be more challenging than you think, and you're going to have to redecorate and then. Ruin the wallpaper. Yeah. Don't so, ruin the wallpaper. No. no. So it's run cable, even if you cool that cable up in the ceiling, no one sees it. Yeah. Um, it's there for the future. Absolutely, and that's all about future proofing. Yeah. So it is about the resale, but equally it's about you. You know, your life needs, family will change. Yeah. And if we've done our job right, then we have put future proofing in there. So, you know, it will come into play when it needs to. Perfect. Now, before we kind of wind things down, just in terms of um, your fees, how do people engage with you? What, what would they expect to, to spend or, or how does your service work? So the way I work, I initially go in by introduction or recommendation to sit with the client and do as I've explained earlier, we really sit with them to get an idea of what they want. From there, we can take them to demo facilities so they can see more about what they, you know, get up close and personal to things. But essentially then we work on, um, keep it non-temporal, we'll work on what benefits they're looking to achieve and then get a sort of scope of works um, that will probably deliver what they're looking for. At that point, once we said, yeah, we think we're nearly there, I will go away and work with who I believe are the right people for the job. And some of the guys I work with, they're real techies, they're fantastic at what they do, but without being disrespectful, they're not always the best at mm. selling their own mm. themselves and mm. services. Um, but having worked with them for many time, they are fantastic, you know, but they're not a huge company, but they are good at what they do. But equally, there are other big companies I work with because equally they're very good at what mm -hmm. they do, but um, they've got more of an in infrastructure and they might have more skill set that suits the client's needs as well. So yeah. I'll go to those people. In terms of my charges to the customer, the first and um, several meetings thereafter, I don't charge for that. Yeah. Um, there are instances where I, I will charge for a project fee depending yes. on the size of the project. Yep. Um, but then with a lot of the, the guys that I introduce, um, I effectively have worked into their profit and loss. So yeah. I'm a cost to them, not to the client. So just because I'm involved, I don't add money to the price. Um, sometimes I can save money, you know, by going to different... And that's what, where, I, where I believed it to be, yeah. is that quite often you are a cost-saving process yeah. rather than costing part of the process. Mm. Brilliant. And in terms of uh, geographically, how far are you happy to engage with people and clients? Most of what I do is home counties, London, etc. but I've gone further afield to the coast, even um, got an inquiry at the moment from Manchester. So the beauty of what I do now is, if I know people that cover those areas, mm -hmm. it might not be me, mm -hmm. then I can get them involved, so mm -hmm. in different parts of the country. So I'm probably wider, or I can control a wider region okay. than I would if I was a dealership to a certain extent. Brilliant, okay. 
Well, I think we've covered most things off in terms of why use your skill set, how yeah. we can take advantage of your experience, your independence and impartiality to give the right information rather than selling the technology. Yeah. Um, and I think it's great. So if anyone's looking for sound surround cell, home automation, golf simulators. Yes, you know, security is a big one security, now. Security, yes. It's really any technology in your house that you're trying to get control of, whether you're remotely, you know, a lot of our clients might have a second property in Europe or wherever, but they want to keep their eyes on the property when in the UK when they're not there. So again, we'll embrace all of that. Try to put it on one centralised control. Um, but you can start small. You can start from a single room for automation. Could be blinds, automated blinds, automated gates. So really from, from the front of the property where they might have automated gates, as I just mentioned, all the way through into the house. Back gardens now, Big thing yeah, for us. Security as well. Right. Entertainment. Yeah, entertainment. You know, yeah, of course. Yeah. Post COVID, everyone now spends more time in their, their sort of gardens and invite people in. So, outdoor sound, um, audio equipment, uh, televisions, we've done a few of, um, that are totally weatherproof, so I can stay out all year round. So, you know, there's a lot to it now. But the way I always play it, and for, for any people that are watching this, it's just give me a call. Yep. I'll have a chat with you. If you think it's common ground, then we can meet up, preferably at your home. Yep. And we'll just go through everything that's potentially possible for you. Uh, focus on what's important to you and what benefits you get from it. And then we can kind of go from there. Brilliant. Tony Copeland from Nexus, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks.